Amen. Good evening, and welcome to Pastor All Talks. I'll be your host this evening. I'm Dr. Ken. With me, as always, is Pastor Tim. And so glad that Pastor came out to be with me tonight. If you got a long way to be and share and encourage you, folks, you the believer. So let us begin. I want to talk about something a little bit different tonight. And I've got a real all-star lineup of, I think I've got the uh, uh, the youngsters that came out and was with us last week with the testimonies, the, the artists, the prophetic artistry. I've also got, uh, that's Justin, and then I've got Elsa that has the prophetic uh, worship. And my friend Christian, extremely gifted uh, and, and praying for people. He, he's a music uh, a guru. Uh, he can write music. And of course, the other Justin's had all kinds of health problems, but he's really taught us what it is to live with health while waiting on God to heal him. Very inspirational. So, Pastor and I'll have them on tonight to encourage you with what you're going through and to build your faith. So, I want to begin. I thought it was very appropriate is no pain, no gain. That's where I want to start. So, you have to make a conscious decision. Do we feel our greed or our desires of God? Pastor, I'll throw it to you. We already know the answer, but go ahead and elaborate. Why do we want to feed the desires of God and not what we're thinking, what we want? What is your thought? Well, the desires of God are so much greater than any desire that we could possibly have. Mm -hmm. it, uh, going, doing the desires of God is really doing our groundwork here mm -hmm. for when we go to heaven and meet, you know, meet God and live, you know, live with Christ and everything. What we do down here for God is our groundwork and our tra basically our training ground as pastors, as Christians. Mm, that's really, really good. So what you're saying, even though the struggle makes the victory that much greater, um, I think it's very interesting that we... maybe some of the best things in life are painful to such a degree, but the struggle makes that victory so much greater. So sometimes, for example, exercise. I can't say this enough. We exercise three or four times a week. We hate going, we hate getting up early, but it makes us feel better after and it's really good for us. Or here's another one. We stay married to the same spouse. Man or woman, doesn't matter. But think about it. You've been with your girl or guy for 20 years, you know. Why stay with them? There's a younger, newer one around the corner, right? <laughs> <laughs> wrong because you already know that one. you put that time in they know you you know how hard and take it from me I'm just a new live with myself but take it from me I have a lot of experience dating I don't know how to be married so I won't talk on that but I do know how to date have, 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 this is before Christ I used to live with the gals and you know each and every one of them I could never take, go past a year because it was I was thinking, this is so hard. I'll just get a new one and start all over. But it was the same problem re, uh, reconnecting. I didn't realize the grass wasn't greener on the other side. I had a lot of the grass I had on my side. So I didn't make a commitment. So therefore, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a real strong relationships with the, the ladies that I dated and lived with. And it wasn't going anywhere until I got married. I found what a real relationship is. And how it, uh, even though you go through your trials, if you work it out, it's just that it takes you to the next level to keep going. When you pass, you've been married. Speak into that. Well, every, at being married, every day is a trial. Because you have got to, you know, the wife wants things, she needs things. And if you don't have the money to get what she wants or take her where she wants to go at you know a particular time let, let's say she wants to go out to dinner or something and you don't have the money to do it that's an argument <laughs> you gotta go, and you really got to go through that and let her know hey you know if i had the money i'd be glad to take you when i get the money i will 
take you, you know, where you want to go. We'll do, do, you know, we'll do things. But right now, you know, and I've done this with, I had to do this with my wife, especially if my paycheck was late. The uh, owner of the company was late giving the paychecks and stuff. We had to deal with this. So it's a constant, you know, deal that, it's like your Christianity. Every day you have to work on it. Every day with your Christianity, you got to be in the Bible. You got to pray. And most of all, you got to walk it. Mm. And it's the same thing. In a, it's the same thing in a marriage. That's really good. So what you're saying, on some levels, I think we all know in our heads, but we keep get to this conviction deep with us that God can change us. So that's the challenge. So we typically learn that true feelings and deepest desires, just because we want to, they reveal wants that we face the truth, tend to hide from. So many times that we want to push the limits like we do for so long, and sometimes we want to soak in that pain for a while before God relieves us from those waters of pain. And thankfully, he does that only allows us as much struggle as necessary to bring us back to a place of surrender, the place of peace and clarity for, for most long for us. And we're abiding to that secret peace that allows us to reach out. We have to have that sacred place, that peace that we need. Even though we might think, oh, just for a time, we'll just do this. And, and there's so much strife, so much. Instead of just confessing it, release it, you know, work it out, whether it's the, with the wife, the job, whatever you're doing with God, your friends, whatever you're struggling with. It's so easy to hide, but it'll only a temporary solution because push comes to the job, you're going to be called out eventually. So it's time to come clean, just walk through it, and get it over with, but more importantly, let God change us. We can't change anything. Your thought, isn't it true? The secret things of God, the Bible says, the mind governed by the flesh is death. It's hostile to God. So those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8, 6, 3. Your thought, Pastor. Well, in order to please God, you've got to have faith. That's the only way you can please God is with faith. And to have faith, you've got to believe. And to believe, you've got to have a purpose to do all this. That's good. And that purpose is to live a better life, and to live a life for Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, things that you, your struggles you're going through and stuff, if you have, if you're a Christian, if you, if you have Christ in your life, you have the Holy Spirit, you know, living in you, your struggles are just going to be for a season. And then, you know, he, Christ will work those struggles out with not particularly for you but with you isn't that the truth that is so good let me give you a few thoughts of what sometimes we all struggle with and give you an idea of what god thinks of it and then we'll turn the pastor list to encourage us from god's greatest gifts include not just sexual immorality in other words you know every time we have desires and we see a nice looking man or woman or whatever. We have those desires and we think if we can only just be with those people, well, you know, they have their trials, their shortcomings, their, you know, people we really don't even know. And it seems like a good idea at the time, but take it from me, you know, dated all those years with so many people, it just, it wasn't satisfying. It left you empty and looking for the greener grass on the other side. Also, in that, sometimes we get caught up with drunkenness or hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, self-ambition. I can't, you know, that self-ambition is a tough one because we get ourselves really caught up in what we're, we'll do whatever it takes, whatever it takes, to whatever cost to get to that pleasure, that, uh, that lust, that whatever that is that we're so uh, looking at. Envy, Galatians 5, 19 through 21 has all that. Another thought is the scripture describes these deadly desires as lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, 1 John 2, 16. So, Pastor, to you. So, it's not surprising that greed and pride and fear are the pleasures of us letting our flesh have the final say. So, frankly, that's what most of us spend our time on. People are born in the 
with a sin nature, but another voice inside of us reveals a new nature. Jesus Christ is the voice of God, the Spirit, and it rarely shouts. This voice seems to resonate in this often the deepest self, but also the most quiet. It, it seems to reveal our heart, the mind of God, is where we experience abundant life and peace that God promises that if we devote to Him, Romans 6, 8. Your thought about that peace, Pastor? Well, I know that when I was not with Christ, mm -hmm. when I was living my daily life of drinking and what have you, mm -hmm. I was never happy. I was never satisfied at all. I was always searching and just didn't know what I was searching for. Mm -hmm. As soon as I was introduced, or should say reintroduced to Christ and what he could do for me and how he could help get me out from where the life that I was living, mm -hmm. so much peace came you know, with it. So much relief came. Mm -hmm. It's uh, we were talking a little bit ago, it's a daily battle. It's a daily deal that you have to go through, like marriage. is a daily struggle. you got to work on it every day. And God will bring you through those times and give you peace, give you the happiness that you're really looking for, that you're finding in all the wrong places until you turn to Christ. That's so good. Let me a closing thought as we start to close here. We got on a little late. So I, I, we've got a lot of quality people. I want you to hear some testimonies, new teaching. For example, if we, the solution that makes sense to our minds, our training, our background, our experience, in other words, understanding, don't listen to self nature. Rule number one. Self love whispers one ear, God whispers in the other. The first is relentless, bold, eager, reckless. The other simply is peaceful, speaks with a few words, mild, gentle. There's a voice of one. So the other ones that are always, the other voice is always trying to get you to try all these things. The voice of God is only one way, always with peace, gentle, mild. So the very down truth is essentially to the ultimate discern that God wants us to do. If we'll starve the lust of the flesh, if our heart will start yielding to the satisfaction, the yielding is the true desire, God's delight. That's what we will lock into and figure out. That's exactly what the Spirit wants to show us, reward us with us to be patient and let Him do what He does best. Because if we make a conscious decision, will we, will we feel, feed our greed or the desires of God like a hum, hungry infant? Our greed will always take over if we let it. I want to I want to be fed. It wants to be fed in five minutes. And it still wants more and more. It's never ending. So what do we do? If we'll put a demand on something that makes us happy, if our heart desires and needs what's truly satisfied, the commitments last. In other words, if we'll look for God first, if we'll take that small, still voice, if we'll search for peace, we'll search for understanding what God's way is, then we'll want to go for God's desires instead of our lust of the flesh. And it's so hard. I know it's, e it's easy to sit here and talk about it, but to walk it out daily, it's quiet. But the key is meditate on God. Make sure you have that word in front of you and make sure you're speaking out those scriptures in your mind. Your final thought, Pastor, is to be close. Well, if you want, you know, if you're a greedy person, and I used to be, particularly with my alcohol that I had, mm -hmm. If you want to be greedy, be greedy for God's word. Be greedy for God's grace. Not things of the world. Don't be greedy for money. Don't be greedy for, you know, your neighbor has a brand new car so you, you know, feel like you need to have one. That's not necessary. In Christ, mm -hmm. seek the kingdom of God first and all these things will come to you. That's the key. Seek God. Seek the kingdom. Don't, you know, if you want to be greedy, be greedy in that. Be greedy in seeking the word. Don't let somebody else stop you. Mm, that's really good. 
But let me close with this last thought. Uh, we're running out of time, and I've got the great Dr. Earl with us. He's going to come on shortly, and I want to encourage you with our next subject. Um, I'll, I'll close with this. It's, I, I think it's, you know, no pain, no gain. You know, that was big when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s. Really, it was the 60s, but I try to sound younger today. Is these things that we go through, it doesn't mean that they have to be so hard. It will focus on our true objective. It means God the Father. If we will look at His Word, if we will study His Word, if we'll meditate on Him, if we'll keep those scriptures in front of us, if we'll relate to life as those stories, they're not just stories from an old history book that may or may not happen. A lot of those parables Jesus gave, maybe they weren't true people, but it's their applicable of uh, 2,000 years ago as they are today. There's so many topics we can talk about, but if you'll keep yourself focused in what some of those things, and even speak in some of those parables, so people understand what they are, and this will make it even, you know what they used to do in 2,000 years ago? They didn't have the Bible that came out in 1611. I was only 10 then, but I wasn't quite old enough to understand what they were doing, but there was no periods, and they didn't have it aligned like they do now. But in, in 2,000 years ago, I wasn't born obviously then, but they had them in scrolls and they would read them out loud, the Old Testament. And it says faith comes by hearing. And hearing what? The Word of God. So that's how they got their faith. There was no preacher like we have one on every corner. So today they're saying that there's a famine of the Word. It's not of the Word, it's how we work the Word. So in other words, there's, you can look on anything on your phone, on TV, any cable channel. You can hear people on the street preaching, but reality is, what are they saying? Are they saying anything that makes any sense? Are they giving you life, or they're just saying something to maybe lift themselves up, or maybe looking for money for themselves for their special projects? If the word points you to Jesus, and Jesus is changing your life, that's what you want to look to. So in other words, there's too much of you know, how the stories are in the Bible, and that's fine. And I love the churches. We should, the, the Bible says, we shouldn't forsake the assemblies. So it's important to go. But if the church is not teaching, not training, equipping, and sending people out, if they're not bringing you, if, if everybody in the church is in debt or sick, or not going anywhere, never preached anywhere, or couldn't pray for the sick, or never gave a prophetic word or whatever, think twice of that church. What are they really doing? Because the true church is really, Jesus said himself, little flock. He always said that. Because in 1 Corinthians, he always talks about, you know, the small, I think the biggest church he ever had was 120. Think about that for a minute. 120. He spoke to thousands. But most of them are ridiculing it, laughing at him. I'll give you one real quick. Mark 4. The woman of the issue of blood is trying to reach out to touch him. He says, who touched me? The, the apostles are laughing. Going, There's everybody running in and hitting me, you know. You're running by people. I'm uh, not running. You're walking by people. They're bumping into you. What do you mean who touched you? But nobody was, nobody else got healed. Nobody else cared. Nobody else had faith. Nobody was believing what he was saying. They had Jesus. Everybody wants to go back to those times. It was harder. They had Jesus there. They didn't even know who he was. So I want to close with this. We don't have Jesus with us, but we have him in here. If people would just realize he's still there, not we can't see him, it doesn't matter. Even says John, I think it's 20, and Pastor help me, 20, 29, blessed are those that have seen me, but blessed are more, even says the message, more that have not seen me. So if that is all true, and we have not seen him, then we're more blessed because we have the faith, because why? The word's here. So it's not the phantom, but I finally got one right, I believe. So, if, if what I'm getting at is if we are looking at the scriptures and we are meditating them all, or we're seeing them how they fit in our life, we are changing slowly to be Christ-like. That's our example. Not the greatest movie star, not the greatest football player, not the president. I mean, they're all great people, but, you know, be Christ-like. That's going to change our world as we know it, the sphere of influence that we have here. Until next week, I'm Dr. Ken, of course. The great Pastor Tim will be back with me shortly. We'll see you next week on Pastor's Talk. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching.